Today, let's benchmark the Metal Graphics API against DirectX on an Intel-based Mac and see if there is any improvement from my episode on this topic last year. All these games shown today have been played on an Intel-based iMac, Retina 5K 27-inch from 2019, and are all playing at the same graphical settings. Let's begin with our first game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a high-end AAA game. It comes with a handy benchmark feature, which allows you to see how the game will perform on your Mac model. We are seeing an average frame rate of 49 FPS on Mac OS and 61 FPS on Windows 10. Yes, Windows 10 is a little bit better, but Mac OS is not far behind and Feral Interactive have done a great job with optimizing the Mac OS port. Shadow of the Tomb Raider actually takes advantage of Metal API features new to 10.15. Two examples are support for external graphics processors and HDR features, which is available as an option within the game. Next up, we have a playable first-person demo known as Spaceship Demo. If you closely followed WWDC 20, you may have spotted this demo running on an Apple Silicon-based Mac at a tech session. For this video though, I wanted to see how it would fare on an Intel-based Mac. This demo reflects AAA game production and showcases advanced rendering and visual effect technology, such as volumetric lighting, ambient occlusion, and real-time reflections. All of this is running on the Unity Engine 2. On macOS, the average frame rate is about 45, and on Windows 10, it's about 55 FPS. Not bad for an experience on this graphical caliber. Now let's take a look at a new action RPG from Cradle Games, Hellpoint. According to the developer, Hellpoint is powered by Unity Engine, although it is a heavily modified version to greatly improve performance across both Windows and macOS builds. On both operating systems, the frame rate is generally above 80 frames per second. Not bad at all. Coming up next, we have the strategy game Total War Three Kingdoms. Three Kingdoms has so much going on screen at once, it can actually be quite a taxing game. So using the benchmark feature, you can see that the game runs under macOS with an average frame rate of 27.3 FPS, while under Windows 10, we're looking at 34.9 FPS. Next, we have the off-road racing game, Dirt 4. On macOS, we're seeing around 85 FPS, whilst Windows 10 generally receives over 110 FPS, quite a bit higher. Yes, the macOS frame rate is a little behind, but in my opinion, it's still really good. Anything above 60 FPS on a Mac especially is fine. The Mac developer, Feral Interactive, are Mac gaming wizards, that's for sure. Now let's take a look at 3D platformer Hot Lava. Both versions generally receive over 120 FPS. That's very impressive. Yes, it's not a triple A game by any means, but it does still offer a high-end graphical experience, albeit with an arcade art style. Hot Lava on macOS also takes advantage of metal API features new to 10.15, so that could be another reason for the top-notch performance here. And last, we have the FPS game, Borderlands 3. Under Windows, Borderlands 3 only requires a 2GB graphics card, but to run it under macOS, you need an 8GB graphics card. Ridiculous. When using the benchmark feature, you can see it only gets an average frame rate of 25.5 FPS, while the Windows version sees 44.34 FPS. Look, in the past, Feral Interactive worked on Borderlands 1, and Aspire Media worked on Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel. Those ports were incredibly well done, and even worked 
pretty well on low-end machines. The macOS version of Borderlands 3 has been worked on in-house at Gearbox. This is not the best example of AAA gaming on Mac. In my opinion, it's a pretty sloppy and lazy port, to the point that it's almost unplayable for most Macs out there. What can we take from all this? In the past, games using OpenGL often had enormous performance differences between operating systems. Nowadays, the Metal Graphics API doesn't fall too far behind DirectX. While most AAA games still don't come to Mac, it's evident that the ones that do typically receive love and care these days, apart from Borderlands 3. It will be interesting to see how an Apple Silicon Mac will compare later this year, but that's a video for another day. Anyway, what do you think of all of this? If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button and consider subscribing and turning on notifications to stay up to date with everything Mac gaming. Anyway, thanks for watching.